The world of TV sure is a cruel one, and in the age of streaming where shows can be cancelled mere days after you've binged them, it feels like an especially tough landscape. Many beloved shows are cancelled for reasons that are baffling or nebulous at best. Where vague business red tape or behind the scenes squabblings kills them off, but it's also fair to say that many cancelled shows got the chop for blindingly obvious reasons. In some cases, it's all down to fundamental problems with the show's format, presentation and storytelling, while in others, it's the result of network work executives simply not giving the series a chance to find an audience. With some not impossible changes though, things could have turned out quite differently for these promising series. And with that in mind, I'm Adam from What Culture, and here are 10 cancelled TV shows that made obvious mistakes. Number 10 trying to outsmart the internet, Westworld. Westworld's first season was a major hit for HBO, building a committed audience of fans who loved to obsess over basically every aspect of the show's lore. But after the intense fandom managed to basically predict most of the first season's big reveals, creators Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy went on the defensive for season two, even rewriting aspects of the plot after fans figured things out. Hilariously, Nolan actually asked the vocal fan community to stop guessing the plot. And for many, Nolan and Joy's attempt to outsmart the internet signaled the show's creative downfall, resulting in the third and fourth seasons becoming increasingly reliant on convoluted and arguably nonsensical storytelling that fans couldn't predict. Rather than embrace the ingenuity of the fandom and accept that the internet will always win this game, they tried to one-up them, resulting in writing that left many fans unsatisfied. The show's ratings had steadily declined season upon season, and the season four finale pulled in an embarrassingly low 391,000 views compared to 2.24 million for the first season's finale. Given both shows' massive production budget and Warner Brothers' desperate need to shed costs amid executive reshufflings, it was a no-brainer that Westworld would get the chop. But had Nolan and Joy stuck the storytelling course and ignored the internet, things could have gone very differently. Number 9. Airing episodes out of order Firefly. It certainly wasn't creator Joss Whedon's fault that his cult fave sci-fi western series Firefly was cancelled by Fox after just 11 of its 14 filmed episodes were aired. As was a depressingly common occurrence in the late 90s and early noughts, Fox gave the show such little chance to succeed that it basically amounts to sabotage. The big problem? Fox decided to air the episodes out of order because they felt the pilot episode Serenity wasn't a satisfactory action-packed introduction to the series. And so the second episode so the train job was retooled into a second pilot, in turn depriving audiences of the crucial onboarding and character information present in the original pilot. The rest of the season aired episodes in a seemingly semi-random order, creating a disjointed and occasionally nonsensical feel which unsurprisingly turned many viewers off. Fox ultimately cancelled the show amid declining ratings, but once Firefly hit DVD and people saw the episodes in the correct chronological order, it became a word of mouth success. This led to Whedon getting the green light to produce a feature film sequel, Serenity, which while well received failed to turn a profit at the box office, effectively ending the series for good. Number 8. Forcing David Lynch to reveal the killer, Twin Peaks David Lynch and Mark Frost's Twin Peaks was a water cooler show like few others. Everyone was talking about it when it premiered in 1990, desperate to know the identity of Laura Palmer's Sherry Lee's murderer. But Lynch and Frost, well aware that the show's days would be numbered once they let the cat out of the bag, actually never intended to reveal who the killer was. However, network ABC saw things quite differently. With ratings sharply dropping at the start of the second season, ABC executives forced the duo to reveal the killer's identity just seven episodes into season two. And though the episode in question saw a major rating spike, the divisive nature of the reveal only further caused the ratings to nosedive thereafter. Lynch and Frost's involvement with the show also lessened after the killer reveal, which may have attributed to the decline in quality through the remainder of the season. By the end of season two, the ratings were a mere fraction of the season one premiere, causing ABC to cancel Twin Peaks while leaving fans on an agonizing cliffhanger. Lynch quite rightfully said that the network killed the goose that laid the golden eggs by making them reveal Laura's killer. In something of a happy ending though, the show was given a belated revival in 2017 with Lynch's acclaimed Twin Peaks The Return, which aired on Showtime. Number 7. Having no long-term roadmap, Heroes When Heroes debuted back in 2006, many felt that it was The Next Lost, a well-crafted supernatural series focused around a compelling mystery and fascinating cast of characters. But after a 
stellar first season, it soon enough became clear that creator Tim Kring simply didn't have a mapped out direction for the overarching story and characters. From season 2 onward, critics and fans alike complained about the meandering storytelling, implausible character motivations, and generally slapdash, throw everything and see what sticks nature of writing. In 2010, the very day that its final episode aired, the AV Club published a fascinating interview with Kring where he effectively confirmed that he and the show's other writers were basically making things up as they went along, and would routinely change things on the fly if they felt like it. As such, it's little surprise that as the scope grew, heroes became increasingly disjointed, until only the most diehard fans were still with it. By the end of Season 4, the ratings were only one third of those in Season 1, and so NBC decided to can it. This is a common problem with breakout word of mouth series, many of which are created with an initially modest scope and quickly fall apart when the creatives can't chart an engaging, multi-season path forward. Number 6. Releasing All at Once, 1899 1899 was the new series from dark creators Yanti Freeze and Baron Bo Odar, and Netflix clearly banked on it becoming another word of mouth hit mystery show. However, 1899 was unceremoniously cancelled just six weeks after its premiere, with subsequent reports noting that Netflix canned the show due to its low completion rate, whereby only a small fraction of viewers actually finished the entire series. There were a few mistakes Netflix clearly made with distributing 1899, namely releasing it just six days before Wednesday hit their platform and sucked all the air out of the room, and perhaps worst of all, dropping it all at once. Though Netflix has popularised the binge model and only deviated from it on a few special occasions, such as splitting Stranger Things fourth season in two, 18 1999 would have been a perfect show to experiment with a weekly release model. Given that mystery-centric shows benefit massively from audience chatter and theory crafting, 1899 probably would have fared better by, say, dropping two episodes per week over the course of a month. That way discussions would have had time to grow, and it would have also been given space away from Wednesday, rather than being basically forgotten about the moment that the Adams Family series was released. This would in no way have guaranteed that 1899 fared well enough to get renewed, but dumping all the episodes at once with minimal marketing ahead of a far more mainstream show was basically setting it up to fail. Number 5. Hiring Scott Book as showrunner, Iron Fist Marvel's Iron Fist lasted for two seasons before Netflix cancelled it, and for many the reason for its failure to retain an audience was obvious, hiring showrunner Scott Book. Though Book is an acclaimed, award-winning writer for his work on Six Feet Under, Rome and Dexter, he's also largely credited with ruining Dexter after becoming the showrunner during its maligned final three seasons. As soon as Book was announced to be overseeing Iron Fist, fans expressed vocal scepticism about his ability to deliver a quality end result. And so it wasn't remotely surprising when the first season received near universal critical scorn. Though season 2 was a marked improvement, it was simply too little too late to right the sinking ship. And amid dwindling viewing figures, Iron Fist was cancelled barely a month after its second season was released. Basically, everyone could see the flop coming, save for Marvel Television, who were knocked off their feet by Buck's pitch and seemingly overlooked his time driving Dexter into the ground. Number 4. Changing its time slot, Terminator The Sarah Connor Chronicles Terminator The Sarah Connor Chronicles was a strong ratings hit for Fox when it first premiered in 2008, though by the end of its second season, viewership had tumbled to consistently less than half of the first, prompting the network to cancel it. Yet anybody paying attention could see that Terminator wasn't cancelled due to a lack of quality, it was because Fox pulled another scheduling switcheroo which basically doomed it. Midway through season 2, Fox randomly stopped airing the show for two entire months, and when it returned, it had been moved from a prime Monday evening slot to Friday evening, also known as the death slot due to the lack of viewership. Combined with the minimal marketing for the back end of the second season, it basically signalled that Fox had given up on the show. No matter that the series reception among both fans and critics actually improved throughout season 2. If Fox had actually given season 2 a fair shake, rather than making audiences work to figure out when it was airing, it might have actually fared well enough to stick around for a third. Number 3. Deviating from the source material, Resident Evil Sitting through Netflix's recent Resident Evil series was like observing a slow motion 8 episode car crash. Everybody watching knew that disaster was imminent while being powerless to do anything about it. Given the beloved survival horror IP, the TV series treatment made total sense on paper 
paper, as it allowed the creators to take their time adapting the games, something the movies had struggled with amid the confines of a mere two hours. But showrunner Andrew Dabb decided instead to splinter off and deliver a show that was effectively Resident Evil in name only. Beyond lifting a few basic ideas and characters, the bulk of the series could have been any random sci-fi horror show with recognisable branding slapped on it. Unsurprisingly, fans of the game were none too pleased resulting in it receiving a brutal 26% audience rating and been cancelled roughly six weeks after its premiere. Sadly, Netflix and other streamers will probably take the wrong message away from this, that there isn't an audience appetite for Resident Evil, when all they really want after so many poor live-action adaptations is one that's source faithful and actually good. Number 2. Being set in the present day, Blockbuster On paper, a nostalgic sitcom centred around the halcyon days of Blockbuster video could have been an easy hit for Netflix, ironically the company who put them out of business, especially with the charming Randell Park and Melissa Fumero playing the leads. The problem? For reasons that will never truly be clear, the decision was made to set the show in the present day, focused on the employees of the last remaining blockbuster store. But that isn't nearly as fun or interesting as a period sitcom set in the mid-90s, the height of blockbuster's power, which could have easily exploited the growing audience nostalgia for that era. It was a slam dunk idea, because there are a few things more bad and media than nostalgia, and yet by setting it in the present, Blockbuster ended up feeling like nothing more than a tired fourth-rate superstore knockoff. Barely a month after its release, Netflix announced Blockbuster's cancellation, confirming that audiences had soundly rejected it, and letting everybody joke that Netflix killed Blockbuster again. Number 1. Killing Danny Too Early, Bloodline Thriller series Bloodline was a significant critical and ratings hit for Netflix in 2015, in large part due to Ben Mendelsohn's phenomenal performance performances Danny Rayburn, the enigmatic black sheep of the Rayburn family. But in the first season's penultimate episode, Danny is killed by his brother John, Kyle Chandler, a shocking moment, albeit one in which robbed the series of its most compelling character and performance. Though Mendelssohn did reappear as Danny in flashbacks and visions throughout season 2, his physical absence in the ongoing story was brutal, and simply put, the show just wasn't nearly as interesting without his direct involvement. By the end of season 2, it felt like the show was spinning its dramatic wheels, no matter that the creators had mapped out a 5-6 to six season arc for the Rayburns. Evidently, the viewing figures declined enough that Netflix announced season 3 to be the show's last, and to make matters worse, it ended the initially fantastic drama on a majorly disappointing note. Danny dying might have worked at the end of season 2 or 3, once we'd been given more time to warm to the show's other characters, but taking the MVP character off the chessboard so soon was was a fatal mistake. And as always, please do let us know in the comments section which are your favourite TV shows that were cancelled far too early. As a long-time Buffy fan, I still think that Angel deserved a season 6 as much as I loved season 5. It still deserved an extra season, right? If you want to follow me on socials, I am at Strawn87 on Twitter and on Instagram. Come and say hello to me on there. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and until next time, take care.